Two Mitchell Balmas goals helped Sheffield get the win in an emotional night in Nottingham yesterday and are now back home to face a dangerous Dundee Stars side. Mark Lefebvre's team are the third top scorers in the league and have a top line that can cause problems for any team. Anthony Rinaldi played last night but doesn't feature today. Sean Allen's suspension has been served but he's still out. Zach Vinell's opener against the Panthers was his first Steelers goal and he continues to operate as a forward. Matt Greenfield keeps his place in goal and on the Elite League's Pride weekend the Steelers have swapped their usual orange for all the colours of the rainbow. Brendan Harms again. Deflection goes behind the goal. Dow is, as always, part of the attacking unit. He's got Nass filling in in left defence for him. Just play the pass out, oh, and it's not quite put in, but it's hammered by Tanzi, and Carr came out to the top of the crease. He read that play really well. A little bit of a broken play out in front. We'll see it on the replay here as Dow is charging back to get into play. Mm, hints of a maybe of a hook there, but Tanzi steps into one here and head up all the way and just absolutely cannons one. But you can see Carr is brave and strong, top of the crease. Steelers will take a few moments just to settle things down. Shot count in the early stages of this one then, six by Sheffield and four by Dundee. Usula is onside, towards the goal, that's oh, awkward, go in. oh the Stars have tipped it into their own net! Kevin Carr can't believe he's been beaten by a freak goal yet again, but this time it's not his legs, it's been punched in by his own teammate. Yeah, he still just throws it up and everyone's reaching for it. Kevin Carr, yeah, just unfortunate yet again. And everyone just looks around. Not the best thing that you want to see happen. I think it was Valentini. No, it wasn't, was it? It's Troy Paratino. Paratino, yeah, just comes up and over. Tommy it's Paratino is, well, you can't do that as an attacking player, but you can as a yeah. defensive player. Played by Vilio, and it's going to lead to a breakaway. Nichols is in, and Carr's denied him. And then the spinning shot on the follow up from Usula is away from goal. We see the replay coming through. Nichols looking like he's going five hole here, and Carr closes it up in a hurry, but then stays with it and just kicks it around again. And I think it was, was it Watling that maybe just didn't quite come across the seam enough. Tansy maybe led, led him too much. He thought he was coming through, or, or Sosserman. And, just not quite there for that, but credit Dundee with that, trying to cut the ice in half and, and make Sheffield play on half the ice. Usula knocks it forward and Nichols will lead another break with Watling in support. Wow. Watling, that's spectacular. That's a, honestly, that's made by Watling. Watling was was a zone and a half behind that. We'll watch this on the replay if we can. Watling gains a zone and a half to get up in the play, he beats everybody, and then he just absolutely posts it in. There's no way Carr's going to do that. Ping and in for Patrick Watling. And his 18th here, of the season. Here you go, Watling's nowhere to be seen, and then all of a sudden he pops up there. I mean, that's just explosive speed. He just blew by everybody to get up. Oh, opportunity here straight from the face-off. Villio's moving in. Oh, what a glove save! So fast hands from Greenfield. A little mistake, uncharacteristic on the blue line after the face-off. Elmer picks this up and head up all the way with steam. Matt Greenfield, I think, just sort of outweights him, will checks the eyes and tries to get a good shot away. Maybe looking to go high glove there on Greenfield. As the glove goes down, the puck comes up, but Balmas feeds it across and Valoran doesn't put it home. It's the sort of play that the Steelers have been so devastating on this season. Hard skating down the wing and then a forward driving to the crease to tip it in. Valoran couldn't do it this time. Can Nass? It's oh. up and over and in. Some quick hands there. You'll see this here. The bounce off the boards what beats everybody. But Spencer Nass with the quick hands as it bounces up and over. Watch this right here. Greenfield brings it up and over, and yeah, it's down below the goal, or the, the, the crossbar is... Greenfield flips this one up, so we've had two strange ones today. There's a bounce off the glass. 
There's the bounce up and over the net, minder. And there's a little bat into the back of the net. So a couple of strange ones. 25 on the season for Spencer Nass. See, he's had a last couple of shots in this period, but still only half as many as the Stars have managed. I'm sure the Steelers have been able to say that in any period so far this season. And again, Nichols is looking around for a penalty that never comes. Harms away from Watling. Watling has broken the stick as well. Save made, rebound attempt. Oh, Nass tumbled and fell. And now the Steelers are racing forward. Dowd is the option. Dowd is devastating with chances like that. We go back way back to it again, Jonathan, and then this starts way back in the other end. Watling breaks his stick. And Dundee don't recognize that there's a line change, and Robert Dowd pops on the ice as it's a two-on-one. And the end result is, is that. Top shelf yet again, and it's Nichols again with another pass. Right there, Watling's now going off the ice. Now, Dundee don't recognize it. Neither does the defenseman that's back on a two-on-one thing, and it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. All of a sudden, Robert Dowd appears out of nowhere. and It's Jonathan McBean. So I think this is probably going to be a bench minor penalty because I'm sure Jonathan McBean won't have done anything that deserves two minutes. I wouldn't have thought so, no. He... <laughs> Here's Dowd. Puck turned back and as far as Balmas tried to feed it across and it was just deflected away from Ciampini. Slaps it back around the board, Star stick his first to it. That's good defensive work from Britain. I was just going to say that, Jonathan, good reads by both. Dundee Stars players there as Sheffield get it back up the ice in a hurry on a change. Drop back for Sorceman. Valorand is waiting for a one-timer if they look that way. Sorceman chooses the other side and then gets it back. Valorand will shoot past everything. Balmas. Sorceman. Valorand, oh. that's terrific. Wow. Very not like unlike the, the last game here against Dundee. Very similar goal. But wow, does Valoran get this to the net in a hurry? Sosserman, a good little fake. You see him look at, at Valoran though. He's looking all the way. Just freezes Carr maybe a little bit, but wow, Valoran gets all of this. And Kevin Carr's there, maybe just in time. But wow, this gets, like I said, this gets away in a hurry to the behind the net, behind him. Good skill on show. You ever score a goal with a between the legs move like that, Ron? I wouldn't even have thought to do one of those. <laughs> Maybe a deflection, but not actually try to do a move like that. <laughs> Simpson couldn't take the shot. Creativity is what's come out in the forefront in the last 10, 12 years, that's for sure. Puck is bouncing, he gets through to Allen, and he lifts it in. And a smile all around. Five for the Steelers. And he was just able to keep it away from the stick of Carr long enough and then lift it beyond him. Yeah, he just, it's a long reach again. Kevin Carr does a pretty good job there trying to track it along, but he gets in behind the Dundee defenders. Definitely doing a good job keeping it in. It's just a bit of miscommunication there between the two guys. And Kevin Carr does his best to try to, to knock the puck off the stick right there. Misses with a poke check, and then he's pretty much. You know, not much else he can do. You're a fish out of water now. It's Two unanswered in the third period for the Steelers. And the Steelers are winners by five goals to one. It's yet another four-point weekend for the Sheffield Steelers. And it smiles all round on Pride Night. Two assists for the Steelers, number 10, and Josh Nichols is the man of the match tonight and he will get to do the eddy another four point weekend for the Steelers Nichols is off on the eddy no one else is going out to join him this one looks like it's going to be a solo project until until <laughs> now he's after a little bit of support Whatever they were chatting about, it message obviously wasn't received and understood. <laughs> oh, 
And we're going to go down the bobsleigh run. <laughs> We've lost the driver. Shooter of the brake, man. <laughs> Didn't quite sort that out as neatly as they might have wanted to. Definitely the Jamaican bobsled team have something over them, don't they? Yeah. A little bit more practice. <laughs> Coach, another tough weekend, but four more points. Yeah, great. Uh, great great two points tonight. I thought we, we started the game really, really well. I think we gave up four or five shots in the first period. A um, little bit of a lucky first goal, obviously off their, their glove. Um, but the second period was... Man, it wasn't very good. wasn't wasn't our best best period there in the middle. They pushed back hard. Um, we were pretty vanilla. Just you know, kind of went through the motions, and I felt like we were pretty probably pretty lucky to be tied in that period one one. And then it was really good to see the power play kind of maybe put the game away. Um, the start of the third period there, power play's been a little stale lately, so it was nice to see them get one. And then that fifth one just kind of closed the door, and we were able to see that out. I liked. I actually really liked our pushback in the third. Th thought we didn't think we gave them much. For the most part, I thought we did a real good job with their top line, who's very dangerous. Um, you know, we, we did a little bit of matching there tonight when we could, um, and I thought we shut them down and, and took took time and space away from them uh, for most of the night as well, even though they did get that one off the turnover there uh, on our retrieval. But, yeah, good good weekend, great week. Um, a lot of hockey here. I think we had five and eight starting on Wednesday, so with the Wednesday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, next week, it's uh, it's been a grind. The highlight goals of the night were the ones from Watling and Dowd. Similar, again, players skating hard down the wing and players driving hard and finishing off that two-on-one. The Steelers are able to create so many of those. It's not just the speed, but it's the anticipation of the players in those situations that's causing the damage. Yeah, I think our transition from off, uh, from defense to offense has, has been exceptional this year. It's um, it's something we kind of pride ourselves on. It, you know, we talk about it starting in the defensive end, and then once we turn pucks over, we want to, you know, we want to, transition quickly and not let teams set back up into a trap or you know we want to beat beat as many guys with one pass as we possibly can so it was uh like you said it was very good tonight and, and again huge two points busy set of fixtures coming up as you mentioned starting on wednesday it seems like most of the job has already been done but the target is surely to win the game at the very least on wednesday yeah absolutely i mean anytime you go into a game like that your mindset's going to be to win um you know, we, we play our best playing a certain way, and if you try to, uh, t you know, play a different style, it could end up hurting you. So momentum is huge. We've got a ton of it right now for that Wednesday game. We want to start that game off the right way, you know, get that first goal, um, make them have to take all the risk and just play solid, and we should be able to get some counter opportunities uh, off, their, off their play. The last time we spoke here, the, we were just absorbing the news that Brett Newman had got injured and was likely to be out for a while. You suggested that you may be looking into the market. Anything further you can tell us on that front? Yeah, I mean, we're, we've got a deal done with a guy and I'm sure it'll get announced in the next day or two here. Coach, a very similar scoreline to when you played here a couple of weeks ago, but that game was a lot closer for a lot longer today. Yeah, I thought we played hard tonight. We put in a good shift uh, for most of the game. You know, the first goal we put in our own net off our own glove. and. Two odd man rushes against uh, when we were in the back of our net. Um, you know, I thought we played hard. We competed. We created some chances. Um, you know, we still didn't capitalize on our opportunities. You outshot the Steelers across the second and the third period. Not many teams have been able to do that this season. Yeah, we just made some adjustments after the first period, and um, you know, we we just played a more simpler game. And, uh, we were able to create some offense off of that. Unfortunately, they didn't go in the back of the net, and a couple went the other way on us, and uh, that's all that she wrote against a team that's playing as well as the Steelers you can't really perhaps afford the, the misfortune of that first goal you had a couple of unlucky ones here last time out what was going through your mind when that first one was tipped in well, nothing really it wasn't anybody's fault really just uh, all that happened was goes off our own glove and in the back of the net those things happen bad bounces uh, it's how we respond from it and uh, I thought we responded well for the most part and uh, we just kept going when the teams came out for the third period, you were short-handed. Can you explain what happened from your perspective that drew that two-minute penalty? Uh, hurt feelings club. I think number 23 referee had a tough night tonight, and I'll leave it at that.